the question we've been trying to answer is if you get COVID, can you catch it again? And to do that, we've been working really closely with over 12,000 of our healthcare workers here in Oxford to look and see if we follow them over six months, who gets infected and who, who doesn't. And what we started doing back in April was measuring everybody's antibody levels. And that allowed us to break people down into two groups, people who had positive antibodies who'd had COVID before, and then people who had negative antibodies who hadn't. And what we could then do is ask how many of the people who had had COVID before got infected again, and of just over 1,200 people, none of them got another symptomatic infection. And then of the 11,000 or so people who hadn't been infected before, 89 of them did go on to get an infection with symptoms. So a, a clear difference there, and that gives us confidence that if you've had the infection before, for most people, at least in the sort of short term, up to six months, you won't get it again. But now the study's stopped, and I'm just wondering, why didn't you continue with the study? Because what happens if it is only six months or seven or eight months? It would be quite a critical time as we head into what is being called a very hard winter for us to know roughly how long people are immune for. Yeah, so we got to the stage where after following people for six months, we had some important results which we wanted to share. But we are actually continuing to do the study and our, our healthcare workers are continuing to, to come and be tested. And so we will be able to follow if, if this protection from infection lasts longer, um, whether it lasts more months, we'll be able to say once we've, once we've sort of been able to follow people for that length of time. Uh, just quickly, what are your thoughts then about the news on these vaccines? Yeah, so this is obviously really good news. And to sort of make a link between our study and the vaccine studies is there, there are two ways of generating immunity to, to the coronavirus that will stop people being infected. One way is to have been infected before, but then what vaccines offer is a way that actually we can generate immunity in a great many people without them having to go through being infected. So I think both both the news on vaccines and, and the news from our study today are both, both bits of good news.